your attention for a moment. This is just a quick announcement. Um, you can leave the lights on. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, GPS and its infinite wisdom has had a little bit of a flub, so we'll be a tiny bit late. Um, India Hicks will be here very shortly, uh, and then we will begin. Thank you for your patience.
Hello, welcome. How's everyone doing? Well, thanks for a little bit of patience. I think it'll be worth it because I think we have a whole group here that is very excited about today's speaker. Um, so I'm not going to take up much time. My name's TJ. Um, on behalf of the library and observatory, I just want to welcome everyone here today. Uh, welcome back. We've been closed for a few days for the Rancho Mirage Riders Festival, so we're officially reopened. We've got a program today and many days in the weeks ahead, so definitely check out our program guide. You can pick one up in the back. We have a lot of exciting things coming up, but it's wonderful to see you all today. Uh, and with that, I am going to introduce the director of Sunnyland Center and Gardens, McLean Gallagher. Hello again. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. It's been a while. Um, some of you were probably with us at the amphitheater in the park last year. Um, and now we're able to be back in the library, which is super exciting. This is one of our oldest collaborative partnerships um, with shared views and values in literacy, collaboration, public education. Uh, the library and Sunnylands have been really great partners for several years now. Um, today, after the talk, sorry, I'm catching my breath. <laughs> today, after the talk, if you're interested in purchasing India Hicks' book or the catalog, they will be for sale right outside the theater. How this is going to go <laughs> is if you would like them to be signed, you purchase your book out there, you'll come up this wall here, and we'll have India set over here to sign. Um, that will help people coming in and out of the library from getting caught up in the fray. So if you have your own book that you've brought or you want to just say hello, you can come along and start that line before. That would be helpful. We have had such a response to India's book that we don't have as many as we were hoping to have today. They have been selling. So here's what we're going to do. You can pre-order a book and India will sign a Sunnylands postcard that will be assigned to you as if it were the, inside the book. Then when James gets those books in, he will call you and you can come pick it up. But that way you, get, you, you have it signed. Um, and we, we had no idea that this was gonna go as crazy off the shelves as it did. We purchased a lot. <laughs> so um, we wanna make sure that you do get this and that if you want the book that we can get that for you. So that's the plan for the book today. Um, thank you again for coming. I'm now going to um, introduce our Director of Heritage, Ann Rowe. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming inside on such a beautiful day. Thank you for your support of the Sunnyland Speaker Series. This presentation today is aligned with the exhibition that is currently on view at Sunnylands, a place at the table dining at Sunnylands. The exhibition features selections from the Annenberg's tableware and place card archives and features china, linen, stemware, silver, just everything for the table. Their pantries were stocked beautifully and we wanted to show you all what they had. Uh, just a reminder, Sunnylands is open free to the public Wednesday through Sunday at the center, and the exhibition will actually be on view until June 4th, so you have some time to get over and see it. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, India Hicks. We reached out to India about two years ago and discussed with her our ambition to try and capture the elegance and allure that Mrs. Annenberg brought to her dining tables, whether setting for family or world leaders. As we do in a lot of our work at Sunnylands, we wanted to add a contemporary perspective to our historic narrative. We wondered who could be a contemporary counterpart to Mrs. Annenberg? Who embodies a similar elegance but a great sense of fun? Who shares her interest in beautiful dishes and welcoming tablescapes, as evidenced in India's most recent book, that we in the archives are still obsessing over. It's really beautiful. I hope you consider purchasing one today. And who do we see advancing diplomatic and philanthropic, philanthropic work through what the White House calls the oldest diplomatic tool, that is, breaking bread with others? We didn't need to look far. The choice to us was obvious. 
India, among many, many things, included, including a clothing designer. I'm wearing one of my India Hicks scarves today. Um, but she does much important work around the globe. She's on the board of the Global Empowerment Mission. In fact, she was just working with the mission. Her boots were on the ground, delivering much needed supplies across the border in the Ukraine just a couple of weeks ago. The Annenbergs and India would have had a lot to talk about at the table. India was the perfect choice in another way, because Stan, extending an invitation to India to be a part of the history of Sunnylands extends the legacy of her own family members who have been guests at Sunnylands through the years, including Prince Philip, who accompanied Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth to a luncheon at Sunnylands in 1983, as well as her godfather, His Royal Highness King Charles III, who weekended at Sunnylands on several occasions. So we were beyond thrilled when India somehow miraculously agreed to be a part of our project. She enlivened our exhibition in many ways, and she wrote a beautiful essay for our catalog, which is here and also, I think, available today. And interestingly, on top of everything else, her own father, the esteemed interior designer David Hicks, created the term tablescape, which is a perfect word, and we used it a lot in this catalog. We've been thrilled to work with India. It's been a true pleasure, and now it's my pleasure to introduce her to you. Please welcome India Hicks. Wow, it's full. And I'm so sorry, there was a bit of a delay. There was a bit of delay, wasn't there? We weren't quite on time. Do you know what? The mistake I made was thinking I was in good, safe, local hands. <laughs> we were in a cheesecake factory at the River Mall. Is that the River Mall down there? That's where we, well, we should have stopped and had something to eat. But Martin Lawrence Bullard, my dear friend, local king of Palm Springs, offered to drive me here. We were in a cheesecake factory. I'm so sorry about that. Anyway, so I haven't even... Haven't even had a little practice with this. Haven't had a glass of champagne. Haven't had anything. <laughs> Nothing at all. Um, it is a little intimidating when you have just freshly come from a tour of Sunnylands, which I am sure you're all very familiar with. It is an extraordinary, extraordinary legacy. It, it, it's an extraordinary spiritual place. Um, and thank you, really, that's made my whole day. It was an amazing place. It was also very worrying, because every time I saw another beautiful setting, I was like, holy fuck, how am I going to com <laughs> How am I going to compete with that? So I, I just want to say, Anne's words were generous, but a little off. Um, Mrs. Annenberg really had uh, a passion for entertaining, and they knew that they had something very important in their hands with able to bring bringing diplomacy. Mine, in the beginning of my bit, you'll see I say that I, de I decorate and entertain in an unpolished and slightly haphazard way. So you'll have to bear with me. Oh, look, there we go. Have you got a drink? No! No! This is a big mistake. I said I, all I need is a glass of champagne. We haven't even got a drink in our hands. But we do believe that a drink is a great way to break the ice, literally. My father, as uh, Anne referenced, was, was a great designer, David Hicks. And really, in the 60s and 70s, he brought the world alight. He went into the boring English country house, and he shook them alive, and he dusted off the sofas. And he brought vibrating, never clashing. They were always vibrating, pinks and purples and puces. And he just shook them up. And he also liked to design everything around him. It really was a passion for him. He designed my mother's hair. Yep, he designed my mother's hair. That big hair. You know the Elnet hairspray? Do you know... There are some men in here, you're not going to know that, but the, the women, the Elmer can of hairspray, it's got that wonderful, glamorous woman on the outside. I assumed that was my mum. <laughs> I was so disappointed to find out it actually wasn't my mum. But there's a lot, a lot of Elmer in my mum's hair. And, and he designed everything around him. He once had a, uh, a, a wonderful Persian client come and say, I'd like you to build us a house in um, Portugal. And he said, certainly, but first we need to do the nose. I'm not actually pointing at you. But he did. He said, first, we need to do the nose. And he did. He did our nose first. He just did everything. But he also, I'm getting back to a point, I promise you. He also designed his own ice cubes. And he liked to have big, large ice cubes. Remember those ice trays, those metal ice trays with the lever? And you go like that, yes? 
So large, oh no, I'm not even on that picture. See, I needed a drink, I can't even find my way around. Big, large ice cubes. But my point here, I think, is about exactly what Anne was talking about and how the Annenbergs lived, about bringing people together, interesting conversation, leaving somewhere feeling better off than when you first arrived. And I'm always someone to encourage people to think outside their normal entertaining way. Think of, it might not be the end of a dock. You might not have a dock to put your, your lovely table up at. But you may have a different part of your garden. You may have a terrace. You may want to change things around your dining. I'm always saying, think things slightly differently so it never feels like, even look, a tree house. Even maybe in a tree house. Um, this, is, this is fun because this is just a completely different bit. Um, but, uh, but flower arranging, very important part of entertaining. Lighting, flower, this lighting's killing me. You all get to sit like, I'm sitting in this. It's horrible, horrible. Um, lighting, very important, and flowers. And in the Bahamas, where I live, I live on a tiny island. It's half a mile wide by three miles long, Harbour Island in the Bahamas. And I've lived there for 27 very unexpected years. And you can't get an awful lot. You have to become quite resourceful. Um, and David, my other half, actually now my husband, we got married recently. We were together for 26 years, and then we decided to get married. Yeah. I wanted to take my time, yeah. Um, and then I was sure. Uh, but he, he, he likes a drink. He likes a, he likes a lot of drinks. So we have a lot of these boxes, these wooden crates of, of wine or beer. Uh, and so I thought, oh, what can we do with these? So at, w at one stage, we were turning them upside down, and the kids were standing on them to brush their teeth. That, well, that particular kid is now a six-foot-two rugby player, so we don't need the box anymore. So now I use them for, for flower arrangements. In the bottom of that box is just some wet tissue paper or some wet newspaper that keeps the stems uh, dry. And it's quite a lovely way to uh, be resourceful, be green, be sustainable. Those are good words to get in there. I've done that now. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't cook a damn thing. I've started playing a new game called Pickleball. Does anyone know Pickleball? <laughs> yes? Oh, we've got some real fans. Someone put their hand up. It becomes obsessive, doesn't it? Awful, literally obsessive. Um, but the funny part about pickleball is there's an, a certain area in it where you can't go in. It's called the kitchen. And I said, I'm genius at this. I, I have no idea where the kitchen is anyway. Um, and so I'm very, very lucky that we have a top banana. We call her top banana. She's been with us for about 17 years. Came from England. She's, she's large size. She likes her food. Uh, and she looks after us. She packed the picnics. She fed the kids. She does everything. And she is always in the kitchen, thank God, so I don't have to be. Uh, but during COVID, disaster. She got stuck in England, and we were on the island. So I had to find my way into the kitchen. And I discovered, actually, I wasn't any good at cooking, nothing. I can bake, because I like, I like that, but I, I can't cook. But I was quite good at arranging platters. And then I realized that, actually, it was just another lovely way of welcoming something. Always the good lighting, the flowers, finding somewhere original to set your table, and giving someone something lovely to eat. And this is a very easy way. That, that we've got so many difficult eaters now, don't we? Everybody's got something that they can't eat. It's bloody nuts, or it's flour, or it's wheat, or it's something. This man's not laughed once. <laughs> I can see you. I can't see anyone, but I can see you, and you're not laughing. Are you laughing now? It, I mean, it's not that funny yet, but please <laughs> come along with me on the journey. I don't, what are you doing here anyway? Why are you even interested in the art of entertaining? He's hungry, he's hungry. That's a very unexpected person to be in the front. Um, I'm delighted you're here. I am delighted. Anyway, for picky eaters, if you do a tray like this, you're absolutely fine. If you've got kids coming over, we've got a lot of kids, imagine you bring them over for cocktails, or whatever. Well, the kids aren't drinking for cocktails, are they? But you put fun things like Mentos or those Eat Me Nows or the gummy, the gummy bears, love those. Not, no, it's not a gummy bear, it's a gummy burger. Gummy burger in amongst the healthy stuff. I don't think Mrs. Annenberg imagined that that's how I was going to be doing my entertaining. I did tell you there was going to be a difference. Um, flowers, I, I do think that flowers are a very important part of it all. And, and I love, the more wild it is, the better it is. I'm not one for very formal bouquets of arrangements. Um, and these are mine that I picked from our garden in England. And those are just old, old jam jars or mustard jars that I've just put the flowers in. And I think sometimes the more relaxed it is, the better you feel. And definitely, there was a time when the Annenbergs were, were entertaining in a very, very formal way. And one appreciated that. And, and even to this day, we've just seen a setup which is ready for a, a, a group of people who are going to come and do some very serious work in an incredibly spiritual place. Um, and, and one hopes that, well, let's hope they solve world peace by the time they finish this one, because um, we need some of that. 
But I think there are different ways of entertaining nowadays, and there are different ways of making people feel welcome and interested and that they've enjoyed the company of others. Um, th this actually went rather wrong. Um, my, my wonderful, beloved mother, um, she grew... Uh, everyone goes silent when I mention my mum, because she's, she's, she's actually the best bit of it all, isn't she? Um, uh, she's 93, and I'm flying home to her tomorrow. Um, but she had a very unusual life. Um, my parents were... Um, my grandparents were uh, extraordinary characters, and I've just seen a, a photograph of my grandfather, and I've just seen a, a very remarkable letter that the Queen wrote just after his murder in 79 in Ireland. And uh, my mother, though, before that, grew up really without her parents around very much because both of them uh, were very, very involved in the war efforts. My grandfather was a great war hero. He went on to be Admiral of the Fleet. He became the last Viceroy of India, hence my name. And my grandmother was a very exceptional Viceroy. Um, she started life as this extraordinary, frivolous woman. She was a great heiress, very beautiful, and she really didn't know what she was doing with her life, had many affairs during her marriage. Um, she did what she wanted and when she wanted, but when the war came, she finally found her place. She found that actually she had great skill sets in being a wonderful organizer, a wonderful diplomat, uh, and she did extraordinary things. She went out to the Far East and released many of the prisoners of war before the message had got that the war was over and that the surrender had been taken. Um, she was extraordinary. But for my mother, she was not a cozy mother. And so my mother was really brought up by her sister, um, Patricia Mountbatten. Um, and they shared a lot. They were very, very close. They were really each other's best of friends. Uh, and during the war, because they were both German and Jewish, they were sent um, away on one of the last boats to New York. And they stayed with Mrs. Cornelius Vanderbilt on Fifth Avenue. Not cozy, either. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not cozy. Um, but my mother always said it was so extraordinary because her American history was so confused because everything she'd learned in school in England, when she arrived in America, the goodies were now the baddies, and the baddies were now the goodies. It was very confusing for her. But nevertheless, they, uh, she and her sister were unbelievably close, and my aunt died about eight years ago, and I really worried for my mother, thinking, how would she cope without her, the backbone of her life now gone? So I wanted to host a dinner where all of my aunt's children, and she had seven, would come and my mum would feel that life was going to go on, that the family bond was still there, and that, yes, she would miss her sister, but the family life was still going to be as strong as ever. And I couldn't fit all of these cousins into my home, so I thought, I'll do it in the garage. Brilliant idea. Uh, and we transformed our garage. We took the cars out, and we actually found an old, old oil painting. We hung it on the wall. It's stupid I don't have that picture, isn't it? I've got a picture of the table, not the great oil painting hanging on the wall. Anyway... We put the, and it was so wonderful. It was also wonderful. What I hadn't anticipated, of course, was English weather. And it was autumn. And to get from the house to the garage, you had to cross a courtyard. Uh, and it was raining. And the Elnet hairdo went shoo, straight back there. <laughs> and all the bread buns were, were off the table. Anyway, but again, just an example of using your imagination, of hosting things in different ways. These are simply tables that I bought off Amazon, folding bamboo chairs. You just simply fold them up and put them away, and you can bring them out and move them around and do anything. You don't have to feel stuck in one place. Um, different ways of, of, of um, arranging flowers. This was, again, a long, long table. I think I've got... There we go. A long, 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 long table. This is in the Bahamas, um, where the weather is slightly kinder to us. Um, and I wanted, to, I wanted to have some height to the flowers, and we had these funny little flower pots, and so I just turned upside down vases, that's just a glass vase, I turned upside down so I get a bit of height on that table. I love Plasmon, in fact, when I was, um, you would call it seating plan, right, a seating plan. Um, what would Mrs. Annenberg have said, Plasmon, Anne? She would have said seating plan. Good. Please can someone tell me if I'm coming apart? I feel like I'm coming apart, I'm not. I did jump out of a car and run. So from the cheese factory to here. So I might, I might be coming apart slightly. Um, I don't know why you're laughing. You're the bloody reason we're at the cheese factory. Um, Plasmos, seating plans. I, I think that they're so essential because I think that that is where you meet someone new. You have an interesting conversation. You discover something you didn't know. You learn something. Um, and so I always take care of it. Even if I've got just eight people coming, I'll think, now, who doesn't know who? And I'm careful about invi inviting different people from all different walks of life as well. I think we fall into the trap of just sitting with the same people. It's nice to meet new people. It's nice to learn from one another. Um, and I always say, again, a plasmon doesn't 
doesn't mean that you're necessarily being terribly formal. It just means that you're being imaginative. Um, and in, even in the, in the actual things that you're writing on. So you see I've got some stones down there. Um, my father um, lived... I keep digressing. I keep coming back, though. It's okay. Do you know what that is? Also, craft. Do you, remember, do you know what craft is? Can't remember a fucking thing. <laughs> so I'll start going off on a tangent. I think, where the fuck was I? And I'll come back. My uncle loved the idea when he discovered he had craft and he rang his daughter and he said, I know what it is, I know what it is. And they said, what? He said, I know what I've got. She said, what is it? He said, it's craft. And she said, what does that stand for? And he couldn't remember. <laughs> craft. So I, I am coming back, but that middle one in the bottom is a postcard of Albany. And Albany is the oldest private residence in London. It's where my mother and father had a set. You would never say an apartment, my dear. If you said apartment, it would reveal your class immediately. And class still is a word in England. Um, and so he had these um, enormous amounts of postcards. I think he was feeling very um, ambitious about the length of his life. And unfortunately, he died quite young because he did drink rather a lot. The two do go... Ha anyway, he died young, happily young, because he would never have dealt with all that's going on in the world now. But he did have stacks and stacks and stacks of postcards of Albany, and then he dies a year later. So I am now given all this. So I thought, brilliant, brilliant. I'm going to use them as place cards. So I use them as place cards. Those ones, do I have a pointy thing? I love the pointy thing. Yes, look, I have a green pointy thing. Can you see the pointy thing? <laughs> Such fun. It's like I'm the headmistress. Um, and those are luggage labels, obviously, that I've used there. That's a slightly smarter one. Those are Christmas card tags that got left over from somewhere. So just, just have fun. Obviously, oh my God, look at that. How many people have I got coming there? That's a lot of people for dinner. Um, that's a lot of people for dinner. Um, we do love to entertain in the Bahamas because, again, we live on this strange little island, and there are months and months and months where we do nothing but eat boiled eggs in front of the TV because there's no one there. And then there's, I don't really have either of the two on the island. Um, and so I, it depends on what kind of time of year it is that I, I borrow and steal from Mother Nature. So here you can see uh, the fire. What, what is this called? It's called a um, uh, blooming... What? Help me, please. Someone, don't you have these here? No? No, it's not hibiscus. It's the, the, the blooming tree, fire trees. It's not bloody... Oh, hibiscus. Uh, it might be a friend of the hibiscus. Anyway, we're not going to argue about it. This nice orange plant was blooming at that time of year. I think the mistake I've made here is that I'm actually dressed like the tablecloth. <laughs> That's... That's a mistake. That doesn't work at all. Um, and, uh, and then you see, I've done it again, but I've done it with white. I've, I've literally lost my mind what it's called. What? Ponciana. I think it's a Ponciana. We're all going to keep going on this. It doesn't matter. So we've done it in white here. Uh, I've done it all. Oh, look, I like that. We cut open the... I see, I spend hours doing that. I don't cook for my children, but I'll spend hours edging out a watermelon for a fruit punch. My children will need therapy at some stage. Um, and then, again, another example of just using what's around you, using Mother Nature. Um, I'm not going to be able to remember all the, the idea of those. The, what are those? Sugar apples. I got there. Thank God. Sugar apples. Um, and, and lots of palm fronds. And that's very informally laid up, so you don't always have to have the glasses on the table and the cutlery laid out. We've done it very informally there. There's lots of muttering. Is that good? You're all muttering. He was texting, and I saw you. <laughs> yeah. It's always the men. Bloody men not listening. Um, pine pi you're right. We know pineapples. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, that is a pineapple. But look, this is kind of fun. I've put the asparagus in a jam jar there. Asparagus is quite fun, too. Until Claire says, where's my bloody asparagus? And she comes out and takes it off the table. And we have a tussle about what's going to look best... Is it in the food or on the table? Um, this is a homegrown bunch of bananas with that strange, slightly ominous uh, arm there. But again, quite fun on a table, I think, anyway. Oh, this, this was quite fun. Um, we had, well, my mother, as I said, is, um, is related to um, a, lot of, a lot of Europe, a lot of European royal families, because the royal families had this great idea that if they intermarried, then they'd keep the power, and obviously all of that. Now we're experimenting with not being so <laughs> intermarried. We're going to see how that works out too. But at that time, 
we were still all into marrying. So my grandfather was very much related to most, most of the European royal family. So, so the, the, the king of Spain was coming to Harbrine, and my mother said, oh, darling, the king of Spain is coming to Harbrine. Will you have him to dinner? As you do, right? <laughs> have the king of Spain on a Tuesday. So I said to Top Banana in the kitchen, king's coming. Let's do a good dinner, right? And I thought, what, what, what is going to be fit for a king? I know, blue and white, that's going to look good. And in fact, this was a set that I had found in an antique store in Wallingford, where I live in England. Um, and it was all completely mismatched and slightly chipped. And again, I think that's okay. Um, it's all right not to have everything matching, but there's a general theme here of, of blue and white. Anyway, we invited two other couples who I thought would be amusing to the king and also be amused by the king. He was a naughty king, that one. He's gone now, I think. He's... He's, he got in trouble, didn't he? Um, anyway, uh, he was meant to be coming for dinner. Everything is prepared. Claire is cooking fish. The night sky couldn't be better. We were out on our terrace waiting. We had cocktails in hand, and we were waiting, and we were waiting. And no king, the missing king. Um, so I sent a child down to the dock to see where is the, where's the king's boat, what's going on. No boat, no nothing, no king. We're getting more and more drunk. No king. We're drinking. No king. So I finally think, I'm going to call. So I call, and I get him. I say, Your Majesty, we're... And he said, Oh, India, so looking forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> yeah. So in times of stress, you just keep going. We drank, we ate, the fish was perfect. <laughs> oh, that was, that was a plug for a, a handbag business I had um, some years ago. I had a wonderful, wonderful, what I call small, large business, or big, large, or small. Now there's a bloody phone. Right, where are you? I can see her reaching in her bag. Do we need to shine a light so she can find it? Wait, who is it? Who's on the phone? She can't find it. It's gone quiet. I don't mind. Phones are good. Anyone else wants to make a call? Um, Anyway, I had this wonderful business that took me across America, and, it, and I, I just loved it. And I had wonderful women. Um, we had about 5,000 ambassadors across America, and we sold a lifestyle collection. And I just really broke my heart when the business failed. And, and lots of people say, it didn't fail, you know, 25%, you know, whatever it is. Sorry, 75% of startups don't work out. 25% succeed. Well, we were part of the 75 But it really broke my heart because I couldn't understand if I had put all my love and my passion into this and we were empowering each other as women and we were learning to how to do our tax returns and we were taking our kids on holiday and it was all good. And it didn't, it didn't work out. But now I had the wonderful opportunity of, of changing that. And, and I went quiet for a couple of, of months and then maybe a year and, and, and I found myself again and I got my confidence up. And again, it's just a lesson in, in picking yourself back up. And I now get to work with wonderful brands in a very different way. Um, and that was a, in a in a much larger scale with my name. All the stress was on me, all the financial was on me, and it was very, very big undertaking. And now I work with much smaller brands that I love and adore, and I work with a, a bag company in England called Tusting. They've been in the same family since 1875, and I actually work with Mr. and Mrs. Tusting, and we do handbags to order. We design them, and we make them in the workshops down below, um, and, I, and I love that. And I do hand block printing um, tabletop linens so that I can actually now have my own table tabletops and tables and napkins and tablecloths. Um, and I work with Gemma, who's sitting here in the front as well, um, for a brand called Hester Bly. Um, and Hester Bly is about two adventurous women who were doing things before any other women were. And it's often when I look around your, your countryside here and the, and the landscape and you think of those early settlers and how they made it work, it must have been extraordinary, especially as women. My God, you must have been tough here. Um, Gemma is one tough woman, and I'm very honored to work with her, but we've had an amazing couple of years together. Uh, and I'm wearing the new brand. Um, it's not the new brand, it's the new collection, which we are launching tonight in Palm Springs. And so it's wonderful when everything comes together. And we're going to be in Trina Turk from 5 to 7, if anybody wants to come by. Or indeed, afterwards, um, there, she is offering 25% off the new collection. But we're going to, we, we can talk about that later. Um, but it is just wonderful how life takes you on these different journeys. And that was a great big episode of my life. And now I'm loving working for these much smaller, much more artisanal brands. <laughs> Are you bored yet? Is anyone bored? Oh, look, it's so fun. You've got screens in the back. Have they only just come on for you? Have they been on? That's so fun. I love it. I also love that we've got people standing. Standing room only. 
Um, this was when I still had that business. And we, we did a lot of entertaining there because we wanted to gather together with these women, the leaders, and understand and learn, much like what happens at Sunnylands, although on a slightly different scale. But it was fascinating to sit together and understand how we were all working our teams, essentially, because it was a networking business where women invited other women in and we tried to support one another. Um, but always the entertaining was done on a budget. Uh, and this, again, was, was a wonderful location we had. And I thought, well, how can we decorate these big, long tables without spending a huge amount of money? And we realized that in, we had an overstock of these. This is actually a towel. On one side is an India block print. On the other side is toweling. And they were these lovely beach towels that we had. So I said, well, let's just cut them in half, and we'll use them as a, as a big, long table runner. I nearly forgot the word. I nearly had another craft moment. We got there. Table runner. Um, <laughs> And again, we, we hired all of this in. We gave everybody one of the excess uh, towels themselves. These came from Amazon, literally cost nothing. This is just bamboo, bamboo sticks that we put in some vases, and we tied them off there. And hopefully, you will agree, it's quite dramatic. Yum, yum, lunch. Oh, my god. This is such a weird time. Did anyone eat lunch? Oh, we did, nearly, because we were at the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> but 2 o'clock is weird. Like, I hope you've all had lunch. Um, I'm still coming back to the fact I haven't had any champagne. Anne. She's like, look in there. Um, this, is, this is our tiny terrace at home. And, um, and again, we always have it in the same way, with the same table and the same chairs. And one time I suddenly thought, let's just bring our, outs our inside dining room out and our inside dining room chairs outside. Um, and it was just kind of lovely to do something that felt a little different. Um, and as you can see on the table there, I've got lemons, which sadly are grown on Harbour Island, but at great expense. We're, we're an island that's just soil. Actually, I should think similar to this. You're just, sorry, sand. I should Im imagine that the, the most of the, the soil around here is just sand. Um, so very hard to grow anything. How are you growing those? How is anybody growing amazing citrus? Oh, sorry. Martin's answer to how are you growing those amazing citrus was the gardener does it. <laughs> and we didn't pick up the grapefruit. We've got to go back to Sunnylands. I didn't pick up the grapefruit. That's beautiful. You're, it's amazing here what you can grow. Well, in the Bahamas, we tried to grow these, and they're called scrubby lemons, which is a, a crossbreed. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a crossbreed between a grapefruit and a lemon and an orange, and it comes out in this weird scrubby lemon. But then I quite like to match our food to our, to our tabletop. So we've got chickens with the lemons in there, and then we've got the lemons on the, on the plates. Actually, I designed those that melamine plate, and it's fantastic. It had a, a sort of fake coat of arms that I invented. I took my grandfather's coat of arms, slightly reinvented it, and it said silly things there, rude things and silly things too. <laughs> um, at my mum's 90th, again, a big family celebration, and how are we going to do it? I think we've got a, yeah, we go. That sort of shows you, um, we, again, we, we put up what, what's called a, a Chinese marquee. It's this little tiny marquee. It's really, really cute not expensive to do at all. We, we call someone locally, they come over, three hefty guys, guys, not women. I don't know why, that was a, such a sexist comment. It might have been women putting up the marquee. I seem to only remember guys putting up the marquee. Um, but they put, everyone went silent, they're all worrying. Oh God, <laughs> has she gone off? It's all gone PC wrong. Um, the, the, the Chinese marquee is great, and you can just, again, put out those folding tables and chairs and have family over. Uh, put, in a, put in a quick old zebra. That's very un-PC actually, isn't it? Yeah, let's say it's not real. <laughs> that one is fake. Um, but the point here is that, again, on the, on the table, I didn't want to spend a huge amount of money on, on plants and flowers and all the rest of it, just for mum and cousins. That sounds terrible too. Um, but I didn't. Um, and, and I suddenly realized I had a, an ex-brother-in-law, an ex-brother-in-law who, who owned a garden center Oh, this is genius. So I rang up and I said, can I borrow some plants? I will bring them back tomorrow in perfect condition. So we did. We borrowed all of these. They, looked, they, they went all the way down the table. And it was kind of reminiscent to plants in my father's garden. So I thought that was quite fun. And then the little 90 and the, the flowers and the, fe the pheasant's feathers and all the good details like that. Details are nice. I like details. Um, an another, another situation just showing the complete kind of reverse of thinking too much through it. Just a, a, a raw wooden table. Um, with plates and these are interesting these are those napkins that you tear off from a roll you know those ones now what is better is it better that you've got beautiful linen that you've got forever but you're having to wash in a washing machine using dirty washing powder or is it better that you've got a paper napkin 
that you're using once and throwing away? Do we, does anyone know the answer? He's going for the paper napkin. Right. But it is, it is an interesting debate. I wish someone would clarify it, give us a definitive answer. Are you all going, hmm? Of things to worry about today, right? Turkey, paper napkins. Um, uh, here we've got, here we go. Oh, this is just ridiculous. It's just food to match again. I love, I love the idea of the matching, the lavender with the mackerel and the cute little uh, butter pie. Actually, David Loftus shot that. Uh, and he also photographed, uh, we'll go back to a David Loftus shot, and he photographed the, um, what do you call it, your brochure? The catalogue, the catalogue. He photographed the catalogue as well. So there's a nice tie in there, other than just a silly picture of mackerel pate. Um, th this is fun. Again, we don't always have vast drawers of different uh, table linens that we can go to. Um, I did just see Mrs. Annenberg's collection again, breathtaking, extraordinary, the detail to it, the, the fun of choosing so many different sets. If you don't necessarily have that, you could nip upstairs to your bed and just grab your duvet cover. <laughs> and that is what I did. It sounds disgusting, doesn't it? But we did, we did wash that, we didn't throw it away, we did wash it a lot. But it kind of works, doesn't it? It was a duvet cover and I've got it on the table. And then we've got obviously the pudding to match, which clearly I didn't cook, obviously. Um, quick name drop, Clunk. Brooke Shields, great, great girlfriend, wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, she comes to stay quite a lot and she had just launched herself um, a, a collection of sarongs and I think it was sort of a, a lifestyle clothing collection for QVC, which she was selling on QVC. And so she'd given me a few of these. And it was her birthday. I thought, how can I make it special for her? How can I make it feel very, very her, basically? I, thought, I know, the sarong. So I use it on the table as a tablecloth. And then I cut up the other one to make, to make little napkins. And I thought it was brilliant. She was slightly surprised. <laughs> she was ever so slightly surprised to find her present to me had now been cut up. Um, but hey, right, completely unique for Brooke there. Um, again, flowers, foraging, really, really important. Go out and forage. Maybe you get in a bit of trouble here foraging in other people's gardens. But we've got lots of lanes, lots of lanes where we can go and forage. And then I love, I love to do, um, I love to do, again, the kids are hungry, but there's some great flower ranger going on in the house. Um, my daughter, Domino, I have four boys, and then I got the girl at the end. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Four boys. I love my boys. I was definitely born to be a boy's mum. And uh, they're, they're, they're amazing, but it is quite nice to have a girl right at the end. Um, and so we do things like cook and, well, cook. That's hardly cooking. We bake. But she's a much better cook than me, obviously. Um, and then we put real roses into that. It's completely inedible, but it looks so pretty. <laughs> Um, I, do, I do love roses. My father's garden, he had a beautiful secret rose garden. It was so secret um, that he thought in his wonderful mind that my sister and I would get engaged in this fantastic rose garden that he'd created. Um, my sister um, married someone who was not going to have a large estate and wasn't a duke. And my father had a list of dukes in his desk drawer <laughs> that my sister Edwina and I were going to marry. Um, and every time one of the dukes married someone else, the duke got crossed off the list. And as you heard earlier, it took me 26 years to even get married, and I definitely didn't marry a duke. Um, so my poor father, neither of us got engaged in the secret rose garden. Neither of us married dukes. Dukes have no chins anyway. You don't want a duke. <laughs> They're dreadful looking people. Um, again, just to, this is England, just showing again how simple it is to move a table around. Um, we're, out from the, we're now outside, not inside the garage. But at, you can't see, again, how stupid is my slideshow? Really stupid. But on the table here, a little tiny assorted teacups. And I thought, actually, let's just use them as vases for roses. Epidemic entertaining. I see some of you are still wearing your masks in here. Completely respect that. What a weird, weird time we went through, right? Um, it made me end up getting married. It was weird. We spent... <laughs> that's how weird it was. Um, we spent about 18 months locked down on Harbour Island, which was an amazing time. And I know many of us have had very different experiences. I, I was very lucky in having an incredible experience of being with my children while time stood still. I had to get in the kitchen. That was a, that was a bit dodgy. But it was, it was an amazing time. Um, and we were just so lucky. And I'm sure many of you here who either have a garden or have sunshine or palm trees or that view felt lucky too, that we weren't in New York feeling the terror of it all. 
Um, but uh, it, it definitely changed the way I entertained as well. Um, these, these days were gone. I thought, no, no more of that. And I thought, much more of this. And I was fascinated again to hear Anne when she gave us the tour of Sunnylands that um, I think the, the ambassador, Annenberg, felt that round tables were much more diplomatic. No one of any importance at the head of a table, everybody at the same level around the same table. And I like that about, about um, the COVID times as well, that we actually came together much more with friends and family, those we trusted. We sat, we listened, and I think entertaining took a different turn. Um, smaller dinner parties, different table settings, free foraging. Uh, that was a night in London I can so clearly remember. It was the first time we'd actually got to London. Uh, and you're kind of super nervous about, you've got off the aeroplane, I wanted to see my mum. And I just remember sitting in that garden and just sitting around that little tiny table with the candles and feeling a kind of sense of the world might be coming back to being vaguely normal. Um, but even at home in the Bahamas, we still took those huge, big, long tables and we entertained in a much, much more intimate way. Um, I put this on because one of my eldest sons, um, Felix, um, has designed this for me, which is um, beautiful mermaids done as a chain link, uh, which I had done for my mum. Um, my mum and I will be sitting at that table um, Friday morning when I land in London, uh, and we'll be eating that. Yeah, scrambled eggs and bacon, just a very average mum and daughter lunch. Um, napkin rings, napkin rings. That was funny. During COVID, we got all our napkin rings back out. Of course, I'd grown up with napkin rings. My mother and father always had napkin rings. Um, and so that you could, you didn't have to go through the throwing away of the paper or the washing too much. But maybe that's a little English because we like bars. We sit in our dirty water. <laughs> we roll up our dirty napkins to use again. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get to the end here without, with, with all of you thinking that I am totally fluff, um, because I am fairly fluff. Um, <laughs> But um, I, after, after this terrible hurricane in the Bahamas, um, Dorian, um, three years ago, I had, I had had that summer of getting over the fact that my business had closed down. Um, and I'd gone to learn to kite surf. Yeah, that's bonkers. I took two of my kids and I said, let's do something completely different. We're going to learn to kite surf. And it was a course um, in Cape Hatteras called, uh, called uh, Zero to Hero in Three Days. Well, my kids were heroes in three days. I was, like, still struggling. Struggling. Okay, have you ever kite surfed? It's very difficult. Anyway, fantastic. At the end of the summer, Hurricane Dorian came through and it completely wiped out two neighboring islands. We were unbelievably lucky to be saved on Harbour Island. Only 70 miles away, the devastation was extraordinary. Um, and I, I began to help because I had the time and I had the means and I had the contacts and I had the energy to try and spread the world to the rest of the people that I knew that this was a very significant thing for the Bahamas. Um, and so I actually got very involved with uh, an agency called Global Empowerment Mission. And they're a disaster relief agency. So they go into natural disasters and they get aid onto the ground very, very quickly. Um, and I've now been, um, I've worked my way up from the advisory board to now sitting on the executive board. And I take my position quite seriously. Um, so seriously, in fact, that just as Anne said, actually 10 days ago I was in Ukraine, but I wasn't just in Ukraine. We went out to where they were fighting and we could hear missiles going overhead and we could hear uh, the vibrations of the explosions under our feet. But we were in fully, fully um, bulletproof vests and helmets. We had a security team with us. We knew that we were fairly safe. Yes, there was a risk. And yes, one can be criticized for taking two children. I took my two oldest boys with me out there. But what we came away with is probably so much more valuable than us just sitting at home for a foundation that I work with and asking people to help from a distance. I wanted to be there so that I could show people how it is, what's actually happening there in Ukraine. And the moment I touched down, I began to get some very serious donations. So there is real meaning for me being on the ground there. But more than that, I'm a tiny, tiny part of a much bigger team and it's an incredible thing that they do. Um, and this is some of the pictures. I've done, I've done three trips with them into Ukraine now. Um, that was obviously in the summer, the first time I went. Um, and this was literally um, a week ago. Uh, and again, the injustice of it, that I'm, I'm there with a bulletproof hat, and these wonderful women are living their daily lives in constant fear of their life. Um, it's a very moving, um, very difficult, and very challenging thing uh, to be a part of. But the upside is that this agency does enormous good. They're in Turkey right now. 
Uh, the whole point is that they empower local teams. So the Ukraine team continues with the Ukrainian work. Um, at Surfside, after that tower collapse, we were there. People are continuing to rehouse and rebuild that building. Uh, I went to Alabama with the agency after the tornadoes there. They have an Alabama team that are still there. So it's a brilliant idea. And it, they use it like a gas station, that they have these massive warehouses filled with aid that they raise money for and they get donations for. And then local charities come up and fill up with what they need. Um, and so in Turkey right now, you'll be able to follow Global Empowerment Mission and see exactly what they're doing virtually live to the minute of how they're helping that unbelievable chaos and disaster out there. The other charity that I work with, thank you. That's kind, but it's really not me, and that's the point. It's being part of something much bigger than yourself. The art of entertaining is wonderful, but there has to be something bigger, and that's what the Annenbergs saw at Sunnylands. I also work for the Prince's Trust, because the two don't compete with each other, and the Prince's Trust is freshly launched here in America. It's extraordinary to think that our king came out of the Navy, and he thought, what should I do with my severance pay? And he thought, I'm going to start a foundation. And in that time, from when he was a 20-something-year-old man to now being a 70-year-old king, he has helped one million youth who are living marginalized by society. And he's changed their lives. And I meet these people constantly. And they're now CEOs of big companies, or they're rock stars that we know, or they're famous actors, or they're nobody. But they have a hairdressing salon. And that has given them the opportunity to have a much better life. It's extraordinary the work they do. So between the two charities... I found myself having a much better life myself. So I'm always encouraging people, wherever we can, to do what we can to make this all a better place. And I think there's no better example of that than what we've just seen at Sunnylands. That is diplomacy at its best. Thank you very much indeed for having me here. And just to say, you can see how much the book is enjoyed. Lady Pamela is actually reading the book. I am okay with questions. Questions. So We've done Harry and Megas. We don't need to do that question. <laughs> oh, and lights are on. I can so anyone who has questions, we have uh, microphones will be passing around. Or you can leave. People are leaving. <laughs> That's fine, too. <laughs> we have one over here. Oh, thank God. It's so miserable when there's no questions. They're literally running. <laughs> they're not just leaving, they're running. They're running for your book. Running for my book? <laughs> We're running for the Cheesecake Factory. Yes, sorry, the question. First of all, thank you very much for being here and, and, and sharing all this with us. Question in regards to the table setting. Yes. I always struggle having a table, having all the flower arrangements with candles in the middle, and you can't see the people on the other side of the table. So, yes, that's a very good question. For those of you not running out of the room, for those of you who have politely sat at the back, um, uh, the question was about when you've got beautiful candles and flower arrangements and you can't see each other across the table. I always think it's that first immediate entrance. It's the impact of when you come into a dinner and you see, wow, palm fronds up here, wow, candles. Once you sit down, of course, of course, you can adjust and remove and take out a few leaves here and there or blow out a candle or two. That's how I would cope. But the drama is fun. And obviously, the, the photo for Instagram. <laughs> is there any other question or do we go and get a drink now? Oh, sorry. My reliable local lo <laughs> Uber driver, Martin Lawrence Bullard. What's your question? Question back here. Did you hear at the back, Martin is basically saying that he believes that, that good linen is a much better investment. It's a longer term, more meaningful investment than just a paper napkin. Oh, he gets a round of applause. Now I need to go and sign some books. Oh, question right at the back. Question. Oh, it's a man. How lovely. Yeah. 
one of the few men in the audience. No, I can see quite a few, and they're not all texting. He's texting. Can, can you hear me through the mask? Yes. It'd be much more comfortable for me and for you if we were sitting together having lunch on your patio. <laughs> Wouldn't have to wear this. Uh, thank you for the uh, photographs, which are exquisite, and the glimpses of your home in the Bahamas. Can you talk about the inside? Can you talk about the architecture and maybe the... Uh, uh, the, 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 design, the design of the home. Absolutely. Um, because that would complement the outside. Good point. I could easily include a photograph. That's a very good point. So my home on Harbour Island, um, we bought it um, as is. Um, it had been on the market for a very long time. Nobody wanted it. Um, it wasn't directly on the ocean. Um, it was in a funny location. Actually, it was ideal for me. I didn't want to live on an ocean. I didn't want to feel I was on holiday all the time. So I liked that we were set back. I liked that we were slightly in a hill there. Um, it's a fairly, fairly traditional home. Um, most of what I do and how I live is fairly traditional, with a twist, I guess. Um, it's not entirely traditional life I've led, but um, design-wise, it's fairly traditional. There was a fireplace that we inherited with the house. And at first, we said, this is ridiculous. We live in the Bahamas. But in fact, we use it more than you can possibly imagine. And there was a sort of slightly ornate chandelier, a slightly dusty, ornate chandelier. And we were like, we've got to take that down. It's still there. <laughs> we just never got around to taking that. So we inherited lots of bits with the house, and it just sort of sat and stayed. But it's, it's a comfortable home, I would say, rather than a house. It's a home. Hi, India. Um, I've been following, following you in magazines. I love your style. Um, I come from India originally. I love entertaining. I love people around the table. It's not all about the food. It's about conversation. And it's about the evening, or the lunch, or the tea. Um, thank you. you very inspiring hearing you. Well, that's really kind. Thank you so much. Um, and and there, there is no greater country in the world than India for having a wedding. <laughs> right? Well, it's three days long. I mean, and everyone comes. You guys know how to entertain. Um, I think we're getting quite close to all needing to get up, aren't we? Is there anyone else who's got any kind of question? Well, let's go and get that drink. Oh, there's someone in the back in red. Stand up and shout. Perfect. Yeah, and that is actually a really, really good question to kind of end on as well. Um, balance of life is very difficult. And I know this isn't going to go down well. I think particularly for women, it is hard. It's really hard. There is just still so much expected of us, and it is hard to get a break sometimes. Also, the parenting gig is tough as hell because just there's no there's no real book about it. There's no real set standard, and each child has its own weirdnesses and quirks. And you you're constantly feeling guilty. You're feeling guilty if you're at work. You're feeling guilty if you're at home not working. You're feeling guilty as a parent. It's it's dreadful. But I think I always again say, find help. Get help even if it's a babysitter for a few hours, even if it's a mother-in-law, even if it's someone, find the help so that you can be a better parent, a better person, a better businesswoman, a bit better business person. It's, there's no shame in asking for help, whether you're paying someone or you're just begging someone. Get, get some help. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you.